This time on CityCast Denver, a sponsored episode from our friends at New Era Colorado. Yes, they are our sponsor. But that's not why I think they're a force to be reckoned with in this election. This is an organization founded by students at CU Boulder. Students who went on to become some of our most powerful and beloved elected officials here in Colorado. I'm talking about Steve Fenberg, Lisa Kaufman, Leslie Herod, Jonah Goose. So yeah, what young people care about matters in this election. And today, I'm speaking to the organizing director for New Era Colorado, Ariana Morales, about why the youth vote matters and what's at stake. Ariana Morales, welcome to CityCast Denver. Hi, thank you for having me. So Ariana, why should young people vote? Something that I love to remind myself about as a young person, but also my friends and family, is that one out of three registered voters in Colorado is a young person. You know, I think for young people who are like, no, you know, people don't take me seriously. Legislators don't actually listen to me. Like, us showing up at the ballot box is the way to remind folks that we are a huge force to be reckoned with. And if you aren't listening to our needs, if you are disregarding our needs, like we will show up at the ballot box. And so it's a really important way to flex our power. Do you hear that from people? I mean, I know you all at New Era are out in the field a lot, but do you hear people like, oh, it doesn't matter, you know, my vote won't count. Is that something that's common? It's super common. I mean, we hear it every day. So we're on campuses most of the week, um, college campuses across the state. And I think probably the thing I hear the most often when we ask folks if they've received their ballot is, oh, I'm not a voter. I'm not a registered voter. And I, I actually don't want to vote in this election. And a lot of the reasons are because people don't feel like it actually changes anything. One of the way, things that we like to remind folks is that they have the ability to change issues on the ballot right now. The issues that matter to them are on the ballot and people are going to vote on it. So if they're not inserting themselves in that conversation, the people are making that decision for them. Hmm. I just, I wonder how that goes. You know, I'm, I'm so interested in the po- the process of, of politics. Like, let's say I'm one of those people, like I'm on a college campus. I just got out of class, you know, backpack over my shoulder. You come up to me, you're like, I'm going to, uh, are you going to vote? I say, nah, don't care. <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, I, I'd ask why. I'd ask, why do you feel like uh, you don't want to vote this year? What about doesn't matter voting? to me. None of these candidates speak to me. Yeah, I think what I'd say then is, There are people on the ballot that will represent your needs and that are willing to listen to you. Finding those people is harder than um, it should be, but there are people out there. There there are people right now who are passing policies that are really representative of young people. And so I like to remind folks that it doesn't just stop at the ballot box. Like you don't just vote for this person and then, you know, cross your fingers and hope that everything goes well. You're voting for someone who then during the legislative session in Colorado from January through May is going to pass policies based on what the people that they represent want to see. I was a legislative aide in 2018 and something that I think made was really clear to me then was that legislators care the most about the people that they represent because that is literally who put them in power. So they have the ability to then make policies based on what they're hearing um, in their districts. I mean, it sounds like a lot of people are like apathetic if you run into them on a, on a campus like that. I wonder if you've ever run into any like the opposite situation, like someone who's maybe like antagonistic or like upset about being approached or like, does it ever get hairy or or tricky? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the issues that we're talking about aren't just hypothetical issues. Uh, They're issues that impact people's personal lives. And so people feel really passionate about some of the things that we're talking about. And right now, one of the like biggest conversations that we're having in the state based on um, what's showing up at the ballot, but also what's happening at the federal level for the past several years is abortion rights and reproductive rights. And that is a very personal issue that has been politicized over the last couple of years. I've been doing this work for six years, and it started off as abortion advocacy work. And so I have heard my fair share of, you know, people just wanting to come to the table and argue. And there's a big difference between 
hearing someone who is genuinely curious about why I support abortion rights or why people have abortions or even just like what it is. A lot of people are scared to have that conversation because it's been so stigmatized. There's a difference between someone who's genuinely curious and we're always willing to engage in those conversations when they happen versus someone who's antagonistic. And as an organizer, I think it's pretty intuitive at a certain point to know when, um, yeah, the conversation isn't going any farther. And so at that point, Ben is less about trying to have like an engaging conversation and more about pivoting away, making sure that we're safe in the field and actually having conversations with people who are willing to listen and willing to um, be open-minded. Hmm. This is just making me think about you. Like this, this process sounds like kind of a grind, you know, talking to people all the time. Like it's a lot of, you know, emotional labor, reaching people where they are. I wonder why you do it. I love the work that I do. I say every day that I feel really excited uh, to go to my job, which I feel is definitely a privilege. I don't think everyone feels that way. It's so funny. Growing up, I did not feel politicized. I honestly, up until I was 20, 22, I never really engaged in political conversations. I, like a lot of young people, was more worried about with my family, like, how are we going to afford our rent? How are we going to buy groceries for the month? That was like my main concern along with my family. And so I didn't think about some of the larger political conversations that were happening until I was in college and I, I had someone come up to me asking me to join a student group. I like brushed them off. Uh, I don't know anything about politics. I I have no idea. I don't know if I would contribute anything to this conversation. And it, they were the first person to ever tell me that my experience was political and that I didn't need to have a degree in political science to be able to know what I was talking about. That one person reaching out to me and letting me know that my experience was powerful, my experience was informative, changed my life. It really was the reason I decided to get into advocacy. I like doing this work for my community. I like doing this work for my friends and family. And I've seen how the literal issues that I'm advocating for every day impact their real lives. I would love to hear an example. I mean, I know you said that you worked as a, as a legislative aide at the, at the state house. Is there an example of an issue where you had conversations with folks like trying to get people excited to vote and then you saw it go through the legislature and now it's a law? In 2020, there was an abortion later in pregnancy ballot measure that would have essentially banned abortion later in pregnancy. Um, and young people turned out in huge numbers that election. And that ballot measure ended up being defeated by a bigger gap than we thought it would have. I think that was the first time that we really saw that, like, when young people's basic human rights are under attack, they show up um, at the ballot box. Those are those are the issues that really motivate young people. That was a really exciting, I think, arc and development to see from just having conversations with young people on college campuses. I know uh, abortion's on the state ballot this year. Can you remind me what, what is the measure and what why is it important? So Amendment 79 is on the ballot this year. It is a ballot measure that would enshrine abortion in the state constitution. I don't think it's a surprise to any of us that abortion has been threatened, um, not only at the federal level in the last couple of years with the overturning of Roe v. Wade, but also now at the state levels, several states have lost their protections around abortion rights. And uh, several states have also gone as far to ban abortion after a certain number of weeks. At the state level, it's really important that we're able to continue to protect abortion rights. We've done that through the state legislature. Something that not everyone knows is that policies that get passed at the state legislature are great, fantastic, and they create um, laws that protect people, but those laws could be overturn the next state legislative session, which is coming up in January. So you don't just have to vote this year. You got to vote next year, too, to make sure the things you care about stay in stay in place. Well, yeah, if they're at the state legislature, yes, it means that you have to continuously protect the abortion against threats to uh, reproductive rights. However, what's really cool about this ballot measure is that it's enshrining it in the state constitution. And so that if anything gets changed in the state constitution, it has to be taken to the voters. So if this passes this year, that means that the only way it could ever get overturned is by bringing it back to voters to overturn it. So it's just like an extra protection um, that we don't currently have in the state. 
So I want to talk to you a little bit more about the process because that's what fires me up about politics is like how it actually works, how people's minds get changed. I think it's so fascinating. And uh, my, my producer, Anthony, told me that you all are doing something called deep canvassing, which I am so curious what that means because I've not heard that term before. Deep canvassing is probably the most exciting tactic that I've ever been a part of as an organizer. If folks are familiar, canvassing is essentially like, it just means door knocking. It's going door to door, talking to people. Deep canvassing is a longer process. It is still going door to door and talking to voters. But the difference is um, you're talking to voters about a particular issue and getting to do some human to human connection through storytelling. What you do essentially at the door is you connect the issues to like your real life experience as a person um, by sharing a story that is personal to you and then asking the person at the door to share a story that is personal to them as well. And through that like conversation, one of the things I love the most about deep canvassing is you get the chance to see how similar we are when we're talking about our values and how they show up in our everyday lives. And so, for example, um, abortion rights might seem, again, like this highly politicized issue that people either don't want to talk about or doesn't feel like even connected to their lives. But when you talk to people about the importance of community care, what does it look like to show up for someone that you love who is making a hard decision in their life? They understand that. They know what that looks like. Um, we talk to a person, a young person in Aurora this year who had never voted before and who honestly, the way they put it was they were more worried about the fact that they just had a child. Um, their mother had just passed away in the last year and they weren't sure how they were going to afford the next day. That when we asked them about if they were considering voting this year, they said, it's not the top of mind. Um, right now, what's at the top of my mind is figuring out how um, I'm going to pay for my newborn child. When we talked to them about what it meant for them to have community show up when their mother passed away, they felt compelled to vote this year based on being able to support the people in their life who may need an abortion in the future. I mean, you can hear a story like that because you have the time. That sounds like that. that's about, you know, you're, you're deciding that this is a person that you want to spend the time to be with, to try to, you know, make it, make a change. Yeah. And I think a lot of times in, in politics and, and in conversations around change, we think that the, the more people you talk to, is actually what creates change and what is the most effective. And that is true in a lot of ways. Like the more people you can talk to, the better. Great. However, the conversations that you have in deep canvassing are actually changing minds and changing like habits, honestly. So it could be like talking to that person that's never voted before about like what voting actually means in connection to like how they show up for people in their lives. And so, yeah, I think that's the most powerful part of deep canvassing is you don't talk to as many people because oftentimes you're having 20, 30 minute conversations with folks at the door. Quality, not quantity. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want to, uh, I want to do a little, like, a uh, little, little test here, a little example, a little case study. Um, my brother-in-law is right in New Era's target demographic. He's a young person. He's lived in Denver for like six years, but I don't think he's updated his voter registration to reflect that. Um, his ballot still gets sent to his mother's house. Um, not to, not to out him, put him on blast too much. I don't think he cares about politics. What would you tell him? to get him to vote? One, that this isn't a test. Like, voting this year shouldn't feel stressful. I think a lot of people feel like, and I, I've said this, I felt this way when I was younger. Like, if I don't have enough information, then it doesn't make sense for me to be a vote. Then, you know, politics isn't a space that I should even consider being in. So I would first name that, like, if you feel that way, don't. These issues are issues that impact all of us, uh, whether that's like directly us or our community members. What's on the ballot is like personal to us. And so people shouldn't feel like they need to have like a, a strong background and in being involved in politics to be able to vote with their values. And so I would say that um, there are plenty of resources if you are 
concerned about what's on the ballot before opening it up um, that you could look into. But I think more than anything, what I would say is that I understand that voting has not felt maybe like it's been impactful in the past, that it's like an actual way to create change. And so if that is the feeling you have, you're not alone. I think a lot of people feel that way. And also, again, there are powerful issues that are right now in other states literally being taken away from folks. Um, issues that are about our basic human rights, whether that is the freedom to marry who you want or being able to make decisions, medical decisions about your body. Not everyone has the ability to make those decisions across the country. Um, so it's really important that we do our part in our state to protect those human rights. And then the other thing I'd say is that I think about this a lot, especially as someone who has family members who are undocumented, um, that it's a, it's a real privilege to decide that we don't care about voting, that we don't want to vote because, you know, we don't care about politics. That is a privileged position to have. There are people out in the world who are being affected by these policies who don't get to have a say in changing any of these policies. So you talked about how it sometimes feels like uh, all the information around these elections is overwhelming. Um, I know there is some information that people actually definitely should know if they want their vote to count. Um, this is going to be published probably November 4th, the day right before Election Day. What are the last minute fast facts people need to know if they want their voice to be heard? My favorite is that in Colorado, um, it's never too late to register to vote. So if you haven't registered all the way up till now because you didn't feel like, you know, voting mattered or that your vote would count, you can still change your mind. You can still change your mind up until 7 p.m. on November 5th, Election Day. Um, you can go register to vote in person at your local voter service center in your county and then go vote on the spot. And you're not alone. We are on college campuses every year. If you are going to go to a voter service center, remember to bring an acceptable form of ID, um, especially if you're going to vote in person. There's lots of great options. I mean, driver's licenses, um, student IDs, uh, passports. You can do it with your student ID. Yeah, that's my favorite uh, option. Also, a lot of people don't know this, but you can do it with a like digital version of your ID as well. So if you have the My Colorado app, you can use your driver's license um, oh, yeah. on I've there. I've got that. It's great. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Ariana, you didn't mention the sticker. You get a little sticker if you vote. You get a sticker if you vote. Yeah. Also, um, if you are on or near a college campus on election day or election day eve, which is what we refer to November 4th at New Era Colorado, um, come see us. We'll have such fun entertainment on college campuses across the state. We'll have tacos. We'll have um, we'll have puppies at a, a certain college campus um, if you just need a little bit of de-stressing um, before or after you vote. And so we like to make it a community affair with everyone on the college campus. And so if you, if you need some community support, feel free to find us. Ariana, where can listeners go to learn more about you and the work you do with New Era? So our uh, website for New Era Colorado is neweracolorado.org. If you are more interested in finding information about voting this year, you can just go to our bit.ly, which is bit.ly slash vote, capital V, and then N-E-C, all capital. There's so much powerful information there. Um, we also have a bunch of frequently asked questions. If you're wondering what... I should do if my dog ate my ballot? That is not an uncommon question. I have seen it happen. I'm wondering now. Yeah, if your dog ate your ballot, have a conversation with your dog. You know, that's not cool of them. But also you can go to a voter service center and get a replacement ballot. So we have questions and answers like that on our website. And um, I always encourage people to reach out to me and let me know if you have any questions that you're afraid to ask. Um, we probably have the answer and someone has probably asked that question before. Ariana Morales, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. For more information on everything Ariana talked about, listeners can go to neweracolorado.org. Again, that's neweracolorado.org. We'll have that link in our show notes as well, so you're just a click away from everything you need to know. Have you seen the stickers this year? I think they're I think they're pretty good. Pretty cool. I haven't seen them this year. Do they look different? I got one years? that has Blucifer on it. 
<laughs> that makes me really happy. I know, uh, it's great. Yeah, there's some different organizations that also will provide different stickers. So, uh, really? Yeah, I I have a couple of different stickers. Uh, we have a, a sticker, but it's not always the most appropriate. It says vote fucker on it. People love them. 